Hey guys, welcome to this video about AKS. In this video, I'm going to make a short demonstration of how to create a Kubernetes cluster in Azure. And we're also going to deploy a simple web application or well, a container using Nginx uh, to this cluster so that we can, so that we can visit so this is not a video about Kubernetes or what Kubernetes is. If you if you don't know what Kubernetes is or how it works, you should really watch a course or two. I've linked uh, to uh, to some material, and um, uh, if you already have some uh, uh, some basic knowledge about Kubernetes, well then this video is for you. However, uh, I don't want any of my students to to create an uh, an Kubernetes cluster on uh, our subscription because there's a lot of rooms for fuck ups in this in this in this in this resource right a kubernetes cluster can be ex insanely expensive if you don't know uh, what you're doing and uh, kind of how you're controlling it because there are so many places where uh, the billing just adds and adds and adds and adds and i'm going to try to to explain those things but if you want to create an Azure Kubernetes cluster on your, uh, uh, by yourself, then you need to create your own subscription. You're not allowed to use my subscription uh, subscriptions uh, to do this. So if you want to do this, you can create an uh, Azure for free or Azure for students free account, right? Uh, and by uh, doing that, you will get like a hundred dollars free. And if you fuck up, well, that's not on me. That's on you, and you will have no resources left, right? So, you might be even more careful with your own money than you are with my money. So, in order to start with this Kubernetes cluster, we can uh, search for Kubernetes services. You just search for Kubernetes, and then you have this Kubernetes service, or so AKS Azure Kubernetes Service, right? We're gonna press create, create a Kubernetes cluster. The first thing is we need a subscription. We have that. I'm going to create a re uh, create a resource group. I'm going to call this uh, resource group uh, AKS demo, like so. Then for the cluster uh, preset configuration, I'm going to use uh, dev test. And then I'm going to use uh, for the cluster name. I'm just going to use uh, call this uh, demo AKS or something like that. Sure. The region is going to be West Europe. Availability zone. Make sure that none is selected. Not one, not two, not three. Zero. So zero availability zones. This is one thing you pay extra for, right? And then you have the AKS pricing tier. And most likely yours will be on standard. Change this to, to free. So the cluster management is free. But you'll still be charged for virtual machine storage and network usage, right? So choose the free one. We're going to keep it as uh, the Kubernetes uh, version as default and automatic upgrade as default. And then we can keep everything else as default. Now we'll go to the next uh, next uh, uh, next uh, blade, node pools. And here we can see that we have one node pool currently. Well, I actually want two, right? So I'm going to go back here. And for this version, I'll actually, if I do standard, right? Now it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to check. Uh, so it's not standard, it's this one, the production standard. So we want the production standard. And then I'm going to go free here. Now we have two node pools. I could, also, I could have also created them by myself, but uh, anyways. So basically what I did, I changed this from... Um, uh, from uh, the, the preset, right? So there's different kinds of presets you can use to do this. Uh, what production standard, dev test, production economy, production enterprise. You can also press this thingy magic to see uh, the difference between those. So here you go. So here's the production standard, the dev test, the production economy, and production enterprise. And you can see the difference between them. I'm going to choose the production standard. And then I'm going to node pools. So you can see that we have two node pools. We have s one node pool for the system and one for the user. For So uh, in the user node pool, uh, we will have all, uh, well, the application. So the application we will deploy will be deployed to this, to this uh, user pool. And what we want to do is we want to actually go in and change some things inside of these, these agent pools, right? Uh, just to limit the, the, the room for fuck-ups, right? So the first thing we want to do is we just want to go to the availability zones and we want to remove the availability zones from this, right? And then you can just keep the standard because we, we want to have, or you can, you can change this if you want. I'm going to keep this standard uh, V5. And for the outer scale, I'm going to keep it at two minimum node and maximum node count five. Now note, this will start two virtual machines, right? Maybe on your computer it says five or maybe it says 10. I don't know what this says, right? Uh, make sure it's slow. 
I'm starting at 2 and maximum 10 so it will scale if it needs to scale so if it has if it has too much load and it needs more it needs more compute power it's going to scale because auto scale is on right but the maximum node count let's do 5 even I don't need 10 right there we go and then we can keep everything uh, everything else as is so I'm going to press update and then I'm going to do the same thing, but for the system, right? I'm going back, to, uh, that, uh, that was the system I was in. I'm going to do the same, but for the user pool. So I'm going to same, I'm going to remove the zones, write that, and I'm going to auto scale, and I'm, you see, 100. What the fuck am I supposed to do with 100, right? So I'm going to do, do five, and it won't, it won't create 100 for you, but m maybe for some reason you accidentally fuck up and you do something that, I don't know, just, there is no reason to have a hundred there, right? If you're not a real company that that actually needs that kind of compute power, you don't need this kind of compute power right now. We press update, and then we can press review and create. There we go. And this review and create this process will take a couple of minutes. Uh, well, the 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 creation process will keep, uh, take a couple of minutes. I'm going to pause the recording right now, and I'm going to get back when it's when it, everything is finished. I'm going to press create right now. There we go. Uh, now it's everything seems to 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 be to be up and up and running. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our Kubernetes service here. So we're going to press our Kubernetes service. And now we're kind of at the dashboard. So now uh, there are some couple of things I need to uh, to 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 hide from you guys, right? Because I don't want my uh, some things to be to to be public. So I will try to. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, this is this is watchable. Anyways, right? So we've created our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, now we need to connect to our cluster, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to press the connect button here. And when you press the connect button, uh, something is going to pop up over here. So there we go. So basically what you do is you press the connect button and then this connect to demo AKS is going to come up, AKS, right? And there's two commands you need to run. So uh, uh, you can either do this command in your own terminal. So if you want to connect from your local host uh, or your local computer to your, uh, to your co uh, Kubernetes service, or you can do it from the, the cloud shell, right? And if you want to do this from the cloud shell, you press here. But ba basically there are two commands you need to run and you can, uh, they are one and two. So you start with the first one and then you do the do the second one so let's do that so I've started the, the cloud shell and you can uh, again uh, you can use your own terminal or you can use the y use the cloud shell if you use your own terminal you need to have the Azure CLI installed and you need to log in right uh, so basically I'm going to do uh, the first command and then I'm going to do the second command and then I'm going to clear uh, this uh, the console okay so i'm uh, first uh, first command second command and then i'm going to clear it so after you have done you're gonna get this this uh this thing in magic it's going to say merge the demo blah 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 as current context in the thing in magic so basically uh at this location currently there is actually a file that you can access and i did some uh, sp just uh, rows here to 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 not show the subscription id but anyway so uh, this is where you're currently in the cloud shell so you're on the home and then you're at your uh, robin and then uh, slash dot config uh, slash uh, l slash uh, dot cube slash config uh, here is a file you can actually go and download this file uh, what this file contains is it contains everything your computer or the cloud shell needs to know to connect to your Kubernetes cluster the certificate everything it everything it needs so everything it needs is does exist and now what we can do now that we've connected to our network uh, or to our Kubernetes cluster we can actually uh, well we can actually let's see what we'll do first we can use the the cube uh, CTL uh, CTL so we'll use cube CTL uh, so this is uh, well kind of uh, how you talk with the Kubernetes API so basically every time you write cube CTL you're talking to your uh, Kubernetes cluster so let me start by clearing the console so we'll do clear <coughs> and then uh, we'll do we can actually do this one second there we go so uh, let's do cube uh, ctl uh, ctl get services 
services so that we see it actually running so we can see there's one service running currently it's called uh, uh, kubernetes right it's all kubernetes right so we can see that we have one cluster up and running everything is working as planned now what we want to do is we want to deploy an application to this to this cluster right and the application is going to be super simple so i'm basically going to use a container that already has an nginx and uh, image in it a kind of an example uh, container right so that's what i'm going to do and in order to do that we we need to do two things so first the first thing we need to do is we need to create a yaml file a kind of a deployment configuration file what this deployment configuration file will do is it will create a pod uh, in our cluster and this pod will actually contain our uh, our um, uh, our application right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cre uh, create a yaml file that contains the uh, the configuration for the deployment right and then we're going to apply that and then the second thing we want to do because we want to be able to to visit this uh, website uh, from our computer or for, from a browser so we need to expose uh, uh, the cluster to the outside right so we'll do that by creating another uh, configuration file we call this service configuration and it will contain uh, uh, con contain some yaml code to expose ports and um, uh, with the load balancer and some other things so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we need to create the files and what you can do is you can just uh, go to visual studio or whatever and uh, create uh, create a new file and we're going to create two files so the first thing we're going to create is we're going to create uh, something called I have it on my desktop here. Hold on, uh, I call it test.yaml. I'm just going to open it with Notepad. So this is the first uh, the first uh, YAML code you need. Okay, so you can uh, copy paste this, and what will this will do? It basically it will spin up a container uh, that runs the example container image from nginx. Right? It's a simple simple image that says like welcome to the web or something like that. So that's what this file will do. Then we have the other thing called service.yaml. This will do uh, this will do the, the port forwarding, uh, etc. and the load balancing. Uh, so two files. And we need to upload these files to the cloud uh, shell so that we can actually apply these uh, these scripts or these YAML files. So we're gonna go back to the to the Azure portal. There we go. And now we want to upload files. So if we check right now, if we write ls, we'll see that currently, uh, so I've already uploaded this before. So we can see if I can actually do this. There we go. So I d deleted the file. So we have uh, so we have a clear slate. So what we want to do, so again, if we do uh, if we do ls, we'll see the, the files currently residing here. And there are two, uh, two folders here. We have Cloud Drive and we have uh, Microsoft. And that's it. There's nothing else on this, on this folder except the hidden, hidden files uh, or the hidden folders like uh, uh, .cube, right? So th there are some other things. Anyways, what we want to do is we want to upload uh, files to this uh, location from our computer. And we can do that by pressing this uh, this button here upload or download file and we can actually download files but what we want to do is we want to upload files and we're going to go there and mine is uh, it's called test and service right so i have these two there and i'm going to let me just double check that they are actually yaml files uh, i think they got saved so uh, to save it as a yaml file let's just do save as and we'll do uh, so we'll do all files and we'll do service dot yaml uh, yes replace it okay i think it's i think it's good i think it's good so we're gonna upload the files uh, service and test open so we've uploaded the files now we do ls we can now see that hold on ls uh, did, 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 complete it didn't upload the test so we'll upload that one upload and then we'll do the test there we go test and we'll do ls again and now we can see we have uh, two files now we need to do the first one uh, or we should do the first one the test this will uh, uh, create our container and actually create an application running in our in our cluster and in order for us to uh, to run this this script or this yaml file we will write again every time you, you want to talk with the kubernetes cluster you write cube uh, ctl right and then we'll do apply and then we'll do f and then we'll do uh, test.yaml so we'll start with test.yaml so let's apply that 
and now you can see that the, it created a it created a deployment so a deployment has been has has been created so basically a pod has been created and we can uh, we can also see that by doing um uh, cube ctl get uh, pods right and then you can see we have now two pods uh, running right uh, so because the reason i have two pods running is because i have two uh, virtual machines running right now I don't know if you guys remember but when I created this I had my uh, uh, minimum count set to two so this w contains two virtual machines running the same thing and kind of sharing the balance or sharing the load of the application so now we have this uh, uh, we have this uh, um, these things uh, are uh, our pods running now in order for us to connect to these pods right we need the ip address so if you have the ip address to the pod we can actually connect to the to the pod with our browser so what we wha what we will do is we'll do cube ctl uh, get service and the reason i'm uh, uh, i'm going to do example service is oops uh, hold on uh, cube get service and then we'll do example uh, service and the reason I'll do example service is because in here uh, you can see in my service I named this example service all right uh, there we go we'll do enter uh, one moment okay so we'll do uh, it's because I didn't run that uh, that script yet right <laughs> so let's do cube uh, cube uh, CTL get pods to see what's running so we have those two running over there so when we do the get pods <coughs> we don't get all everything all the data so what we want to do is we want to do uh, we'll do cube uh, ctl uh, get pods and then we'll do uh, is it wide it's not wide uh, uh, oh, I misspelled cube ctl uh, cube uh, ctl get pods uh, I don't remember if it was void. It was. It is void. So there we go. So th there, here's the IP addresses for the actual application, right? Or the, the the pod running. So if I go here and I visit this address, you will see nothing is happening, right? It's because again, this this pod is not designed to be accessed by by the outside. And if you want to access it from the outside, well, then we need to expose uh, some ports, right? And for that, we need to actually run our uh, our other script that we created, our, our, our other YAML file that we created. So we'll do the same. So we'll do apply, but this time we'll do service.yaml, right? There we go. So now we got example service. You can see that it created something called example service here. So now I'll do cube ctl uh, get example uh, service, which is called. Uh, the server doesn't have a resource. Example, did I spell it? Uh, did it? Let's see. Uh, oh, I am stupid. Silly me. Uh, so cube ctl get services uh, and then we'll do uh, example service there we go and here we can see uh, now we have an external ip address now this is the ip address we will use uh, to visit our website so if we use this ip address now oops let me just uh, copy it uh, copy now if we go here and we visit it hopefully soon there we go welcome to nginx uh, if you see this page la 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 is successfully installed and working further quick la 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 so there you go guys uh, that was a quick demo of how you can create an azure kubernetes uh, service in uh, in azure <laughs> or a kubernetes service in azure so we created a cluster we created uh, some pods and uh, yeah we made the pod accessible from the outside i hope you guys found that uh, useful uh, if and if you did please press the like button thank you guys bye